Hey, what's up guys? GQ back with Tech Creation, where I use technology for recreation. So ever since iPad OS came out, you guys kept asking for a follow-up to my initial iPad Pro video, and I was just waiting until iPad OS was stable enough. And now that it is, I think it's appropriate to talk about why I still feel the way I do. All right, so real quick, I just wanna preface this by saying that this is a personal perspective of mine, but anybody who produces and creates things will be able to relate to this video. So with that said, the iPad Pro is productive, but it's just not efficient. So just like everyone else, I tried using my iPad Pro with iPad OS as my main computer, no MacBook whatsoever, and I pretty much came to the conclusion that the iPad Pro needs to stay in its place. If this were a laptop replacement, I should just be able to unplug my MacBook from where it's at, put my iPad in its place, and still be able to do the same things. And that's nowhere near possible. And I think instead of a laptop replacement, this is more of a desktop companion. The good news is with iPad OS, Apple pretty much addressed word for word all of the complaints that I had. Let's flash back to the conclusion of that initial video. I believe the iPad needs its own custom software, a flexible software that allows for the connection of peripherals such as wireless mouses or graphic tablets that will take your productivity to the next level. Now, if Apple were to do that, and let's say throw in Thunderbolt 3 into their next future iPads, then I'll take the iPad a little more serious. So there was two things I complained about in that video. Number one was the Apple Pencil's limited use on the screen and how I constantly kept having to switch back and forth between my finger and the pencil to navigate the iPad. And the second thing was because of how much I loved typing on the iPad, it reminded me so much of a laptop that I kept reaching for a mouse, which at the time was impossible to use. And thankfully now with iPad OS's support for wireless mouses, it kind of solves both of those issues, sort of. It's not exactly the full desktop mouse experience, but I'll give credit where credit is due. And the support for wireless mouses is a huge step in the right direction. So the way Apple has it set up is you connect your Bluetooth wireless mouse as an assistive touch device. So you just need to make sure that assistive touch is on the settings and then proceed to connecting your Bluetooth mouse as you normally would with any other device. And setting up my MX Master 3 was a breeze. Now, a few good things about this is that when it's connected, you can see the battery percentage remaining on your wireless mouse from Apple's battery widget. I've always loved that widget for that reason. And anyone who's used a Logitech Master Mouse knows exactly how productive they can be. And some of those same benefits carry over when connected with iPad OS. It supports scrolling through web pages. Your left click selects items and the right click brings up the assistive touch menu. You have your typical control over the tracking speed and the pointer size and style. And you even have the ability to assign custom actions and take advantage of those extra buttons on the mouse. So I just went ahead and customized the center scroll button to open up my window switcher. I wanted to make it as desktop like as I can. And it only took me a few minutes of using them together to realize this concept is still not ready yet. So iPad OS doesn't exactly treat the Bluetooth mouse as a mouse, but rather more like a wireless finger. And I realized this drawback when I was typing, I couldn't highlight my text like I can on a desktop. I had to double click it and then drag just like a finger would. And also the side scroll doesn't work either. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug, but if it's not a bug and that's just the way things are, out of all features, why that one? Now, one of the biggest drawbacks is the inability to use the forward and back buttons on the mouse to navigate web pages. It just doesn't work at all. So thankfully you can customize them. So I just went ahead and set those to increase and decrease my volume whenever I press them to at least to get some sort of use out of it. Now, since that annoying assistive menu button opens up anyway with a right click, I went ahead and assigned it to take a screenshot when I give it a single click and then a long press will open up my dock. So there's just a quick tip if you wanted to make this whole setup a little bit more functional. So in a nutshell, given that this is really meant for people with physical impairments who have problems touching the screen, I think there's something to be said about having all these three different methods of input complementing each other all on one device. The Apple Pencil does what your finger can and vice versa, which is drawing, and the wireless mouse does what the Apple Pencil can't. Now transitioning over to the software, I just love seeing the transition from iOS in the early days all the way now to iPad OS. Everything just seems to work perfect for a device like this. Key phrase, a device like this. Now, this brings me to another complaint I had in my initial video, and that was the lack of support, in addition to the mouses, but lack of support for external hard drives. I mean, I couldn't even get it to read my USB-C SSD, and for whatever that reason is, it's just not a good look for a proclaimed laptop replacement. Once again, iPad OS fixes that with support for external hard drives, which is a major plus. And not only is that important for transferring files, but obviously one of the major benefits as somebody who edits is the ability to edit off of an external SSD. So let's get right 
to that elephant in the room. Video editing on the iPad Pro. So now I originally said you won't ever find me editing with an iPad. You won't find me editing videos on an iPad. And reluctantly, I went ahead and downloaded LumaFusion anyway for 30 bucks, just to revisit that statement and take it serious. And honestly, I, I just couldn't do it. I just felt too handicapped. I can't stress enough how important mouse and keyboard input and the consistency of those inputs is what really makes a desktop experience what it is. So for instance, if a delete key on the iPad performs a delete in every other application, why is it when I press delete in LumaFusion, I can't delete my tracks? I have to manually click the delete icon to delete the clip, which to me makes absolutely no sense. It's not intuitive. As an editor, speed is a major key and little things like that, extra clicks here and there, it just holds you back more than it actually helps you. And even something as simple as trying to reverse a clip on the timeline took ages to do and I can't even see how anybody can take video editing on the iPad serious unless they don't take themselves serious. And any creators who are using this as their main machine, that is a forced experience as opposed to a natural one. Obviously, if you're into drawing and creating stuff, there's plenty of artists who use this as their main device. But if you're into doing anything beyond that as video editing, anything that requires um, some heavy input from the user, then the iPad Pro is not ready for you. If you're a college student and you just do simple things like web browsing and typing, absolutely go ahead and buy yourself an iPad Pro. Now moving on to a more positive note, what I love about using the iPad is that I'm almost forced uh, to focus on what I'm doing because there's not really much else you can do except the task that you're doing as opposed to the setup that I have where there's a ton of entertainment temptation, it's really hard to concentrate. And my time using the iPad Pro, I was able to get a lot done in terms of research and typing. Now I bring up my desktop because I wanna segue into one specific feature that I wanted and Apple just magically gave it to us with iPad OS. I find that it works well as a wireless third monitor for my setup. So using Spotify Connect, I can use my iPad as a remote to control the Spotify playback from my MacBook Pro. It's easier, faster, and hey, it frees up monitor space for me to do something else. So the iPad just works great as a desktop sidekick for other small tasks like email or just pulling up a quick YouTube video without interrupting my workspace. So thankfully now with Apple's sidecar feature, as long as you have iPad OS and Mac OS Catalina on your Mac, you can use this as an external display. So on your Mac, as long as both devices on the same network, it's just a matter of sharing your display from the AirPlay icon on your Mac and you're all set. Now on a wireless connection, it is gonna be a little bit laggy depending on your Wi-Fi speed. So I would recommend using a wired connection with an available USB-C cable. And just to reiterate from earlier, I believe this is where the iPad Pro belongs. Now it took me a second to figure out what I would use this for and pretty much this is just a display for all of my background tasks. So if I'm listening to Spotify music or if I got my Finder window open or if I'm video editing, I can organize my windows to where it's easier for me to like using my vector scopes or using it as my viewer. And I just wanna say that I'm very surprised at how smooth everything still performed given that I have so much going on. So that's two 4K monitors, a Thunderbolt dock, three storage devices, all daisy chained using Thunderbolt 3 into my MacBook Pro on top of the iPad Pro connected into that fourth port. So in case anybody was curious like myself, here's your proof of concept. If you have a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro, you can have four functional monitors on your desktop. And I'm gonna go more in detail about Apple's sidecar in my next video. So stay tuned for that. You don't wanna miss that one. So to wrap this up, I think I made this clear before. If you're an average Joe who does lightweight tasks on an everyday basis, college student, then the iPad Pro can replace your laptop. And I know the lines can be blurred between a tablet and a laptop desktop. And I think where the line is drawn is efficiency. One is more efficient than the other. And until the iPad becomes just as intuitive, thoughtless, and efficient as a desktop, it will forever be in its very own category. But you guys are free to do whatever you like to do. Personally, I won't be using this to edit videos, but instead to edit my videos on my desktop as an external display. But enough of that, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree or disagree with anything I said in this video? Would the iPad Pro replace your desktop experience? Drop those comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and show some love to that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on the alerts. This way YouTube notifies you whenever I drop another awesome tech video. As always, I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.